Hello and welcome to a Let's Play of Hexen. Uh, this will be a mage playthrough, and there are three classes to select from. I've already done the fire cleric one, so not now go with the mage. I don't have a lot of collections about this. I, um, cleric, I'd say I played it the most and. Probably mage and fire at least. Still, it's been so long since I've played it, I don't recall them. Either way, I've, you know, I already have two playthroughs of this game under my belt, so it should be a fairly quick and painless playthrough. A sorcerer, sure. Well, I'll still play with the same difficulty, just to... Because I've played the other two with the this exact same difficulty, so I'm not going to start changing it now. I I want to get a sort of a comparable experience for myself too, so I can better compare the different classes. This is our initial weapon. Range weapon, it's not too shabby. More importantly, you have a range weapon right from the start that uses no mana, so it's no danger to you from anything really. I'm not gonna fudge around too heavily with this. Again, two playthroughs under my belt, so. Not exactly want to go through every little area or explore them again. There's not much point anyway. What you usually get from all those bonus areas is just a few more items. The only item I'm really interested in is something that restores mana. So we'll visit a lot of extra places, but maybe not quite all of them. The green bottles I have is a Fletchit, and the violet one is a healing, healing potion. Heals 25 life. Fletchit is a, it's a special attack item. It's every class has it, and it does a different thing. Fires have a grenade, blades have a poison sort of burst. I think Mage has a time bomb. It's there, and it explodes. This is actually quite powerful, it's better than the clerical weapon and it's rage. So cleric definitely has by a significant margin the worst initial weapons in the entire game. I'd say the warrior doesn't have a too bad weapon, but mate, yeah okay. <laughs> Range weapon won't start, you no know, mana costs. Penetrates targets. Meaning it passes through them to the next target behind you then, and passes through them, and so on, and so on. So... A very good initial weapon. I think as a consequence, mage is the weakest in how much damage it can take, things like that. So it's sort of warranted. You you need the range weapon, or you're not gonna stay alive. We're not gonna get a second weapon in this part yet. Have to proceed to the next map. Uh, we we'll should get it quite early on there, though. First time I well yeah still finding new places because I haven't actually tried to explore every nook and cranny in my playthroughs. So it's but it's still fun to fun to find new places on these maps that you they haven't visited. Uh, that little armor isn't gonna make much of a difference though. So. Yeah. What 
door and we need a key. Um, I think the initial weapon here needs to be a solid one too, because if I recall correctly, the second weapon the mage gets is a total piece of crap. So you have to rely quite a bit on this initial weapon. I, I might be wrong, but I don't think I am. Again, ringing the bell was uh, was what we needed to do, and naturally, ringing the bell opens up the cage building we visited initially and opens up the teleporter there and that's probably why the reason why the makers of this game decided that there's no point in telling the player that, that, that such a thing happened because it's too obvious and it's gonna be a continuous problem in this game you just have to every time you do something like pull a switch some kind of notification comes up or you do something like that uh, you have to just assume that something has happened you simply can't assume otherwise you'll end up you'll end up exploring places quite a lot because you don't really know well, you end up exploring places quite a lot anyway. But you end up searching them for what the hell has changed because you have no idea. <laughs> Five minutes. Didn't take too long. Now the actual game begins. Not much to say though. Greetings, mortal. Are you ready to die? Nope. This is uh, about the same strength as a cleric weapon, except this is range. Yeah. And we got our second spell. Which is an ice bell, isn't it? And it's not particularly powerful. Yeah, it's... I'm not quite sure what good is it. It's... Mm, it's fairly magic intensive too, so... Why wouldn't you just use this? Yeah, no, no, I don't like that. Eight second weapon. Don't like it at all. I'm guessing just get used to me using this weapon. It seems to be almost as powerful. The range is certainly better. Rate of fire might be better too. Um, I'm not sure why against what the uh, free spell is supposed to be good against. Mm, th there's two modes: the shooting mode and then touching. I'm guessing it's the most powerful when you touch something with it, but you know, it didn't seem to be that powerful. And I don't want to go in the touch range against enemies. So I'm so vulnerable to them. Our super weapon is a stab. Uh, I seem to recall it being a uh, missile launcher, basically. It's not a bad weapon at all. If it has one bad side, it's because it uses up too much magic. Nothing wrong with this weapon, so why the hell did I use the one that uses up mana? I'm not entirely clear on that point. I do want to test how powerful this is when it 
One, two. That's not too bad. But again, not an amazing either. And it uses up a significant amount of mana. I think it's one point for the warrior uh, mana use, one point for the cleric, and three for the mage. So it's not a minor difference, and especially since it doesn't appear to be, well, bit similar power to the uh, fighter, fighter weapon at least at touch range. So I guess the greater cost is at least warranted, but it doesn't appear to be an amazing weapon. I think the problem is there, it's that the, the starter weapon that you have is uh, so good. So the difference, difference in mana cost is hard to justify, or harder to justify. It, it makes basically a solid weapon seem less, less, less of a good weapon because the initial weapon is too good. Does block my quite nicely though. At least the freezing attack is nice and it probably can be used tactically. Sort of a block a lot of if a lot of enemies come your way if you freeze the first row, it will buy you time to do something. Things like that. So I, I wouldn't say it's a bad spell, it's not a bad spell. Just getting a few easy kills. We're gonna need to go down there anyway, so it makes easier it easier for us because there would be close quarters fighting when we go down there. But if we shoot them up here. We'll avoid the close quarters situation entirely. I do want to kill things here. Good to know the exact value you see in it. It's nice. Three here too. Okay, let's proceed. Well, I'm guessing most of the blue magic will be reserved to use in conjunction with the air weapon you have. I 
be the third weapon is useful. I hope to god it's useful. At least more powerful than this piece of crap. I never found out how do you get there. There's a door over there. What hmm. about door? No, that's the door where you come in. Eventually. And if we can enter those places, I'm guessing it's when we have the option to move the steel place from both sides. not be obvious what I meant with seal plates. Um, um, yeah. Uh, well, you can s okay. Oh shit. This, I don't think this is how this is supposed to work. I'm basically trapped here now with no way to escape. I'm screwed, you're not supposed to get in there. Mm. I, I don't think I can do anything. Yeah, I'm trapped. Uh, these. These measure plays can be moved from switches from the upstairs, but we can access the east side switches and uh, elevator and east, east side uh, seat plate, but there's a uh, west side too, so I think we we can probably move them in a way that allows us to gain access to the middle, meaning left from here where the middle blade is going. If, if we have access to the both east and west side, but now we don't. And since we I accidentally came here, I have to auto load. Oh to god, there's a decent auto load. We're in. Uh, no. Auto save, Guardian of Steel. We'll have to start this level from the start. That was a weird goddamn thing to happen. We'll have to be more careful in the future. This is fairly powerful. Not at all bad. It's just that usefulness isn't what it could be. It's definitely not terrible. Then we'll try to kill few of them, so when we actually go down there, we don't have to face so many enemies. And I will be starting to save more. I, I don't want to replay things more a lot.
Oh yeah, this is cleared. I'll do a little bit of initial cleansing on this side too. Not quite sure how useful that is. here. Nothing, nothing interesting. No, didn't see that one. Nothing really interesting there. to say I don't want to redo things. So now we're basically in the position we were a few months ago. Now we need to use this switch here. Either that on the or a similar switch on the other side. Should have moved the steel wall there. And allow us access to this side. And then it didn't. We press this front switch. I wasn't paying attention to which to press though, so we might end up pressing it again. And it probably wasn't this one. So there was a hidden portion there. So oh, let's give it a go again. Huh. One third of the something something puzzle souls on the seven portals level. So that's all we can do at the moment anyway here, so we'll be leaving immediately. 